Hello, everybody, and welcome to Virtual TrekCon 5. This is the 455 Films Voyager documentary panel. You've been waiting for this one forever. We've got three of the coolest people I've ever met. I hope you get to meet them soon. Executive producer, David F. Zapone. Hello. Uh, we've got producer, everybody knows her and loves her, of course, Lolita Faggio. Hello. And super exciting producer and editor, Joe Cornbrot. Hi, you guys. My name is Ryan T. Husk, and I stopped editing a long time ago because it is freaking hard, Joe, and very time consuming, which actually I think is why we're here. Yeah, so I uh, do hear a lot of swearing and yelling from the office next door. That's true. Nope. Your yeah, right yeah, now, right? yeah, yeah. It's you know, it's those those grips on the you know, <laughs> on the shows that are around us. Foul mouth people. They are no. Uh, um, so let's yeah. say hello to everybody in the live chat real quick. We've yes. got uh, Heather, One Trek yes. fan, BL, Kimber Spores, Rashid, Andrew, Linda, Luke, Just Rosie, Galinda, Steve Case, Joshua M. Patton of CBR.com, Ben Genium, Doctor Anne Marie Siegel. Uh, Shag840 Sci-Fi Guy, and so on. Lots of really cool people. We see all of you. Rose Kirby out in the UK staying up late for this one. All right. So let's get into this real quick. I'm wearing my cool Tuvok Rock shirt that yeah. Joe made. Excellent. <laughs> Good stuff there, Joe Cornbrot. Uh, do we have any of those left on the uh, back of the store? I believe we do. Pre-order store. I believe so, we yeah. do. Yeah. We do, yeah. All right, great. Yeah, so first things first, everybody's dying to know. It's a beautiful day in LA. Uh, everything's great for us right now. It's finally coming out. But what's new? What have you guys been working on besides the Voyager documentary for right now? What's going on? What have you been up to? Dave? Well, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll speak to that. Um, we're very proud of the Michael Westmore documentary that we're producing now. Uh, we interviewed Michael. Of course, everybody on this chat knows who Michael Westmore is, I'm going to assume. Uh, we interviewed him for What We Left Behind and for Voyager. And we all collectively said, how has no one done a documentary on Michael Westmore or the Westmore family, the dynasty, I should say. Uh, so we have been working directly with him and um, it's been, I, I mean, I love just being a part of Star Trek, but Michael Westmore might be the nicest person I know in Star Trek. Lolita and Joe, what do you think? 100%. Yes. Yeah, yeah most definitely. So True. proud to be doing it. Yeah. And what's so really fun about it, too, is it's about Star Trek, but we've also got to interview people non-Star Trek because Michael has such a huge, huge, huge resume going back, what, 50, 60 years at this point. But I yeah. will say, well, it's our unofficial TNG documentary because we seem to have gotten just about the whole cast of wow. The Next Generation. So it's pretty cool. Even Sir Patrick? Yes, absolutely. Sir Patrick, I emailed him about this project. He emailed me back within... I don't know, a half hour and had us to his home. He wow. was, he might have been the first interview we did. I think he was, uh, Joe, out, after, outside of Michael. Uh, after, uh, outside of Michael. Yeah. So uh, for everybody at home, you know that the Voyager documentary is deep into post production. We'll go into those details in a little bit, but uh, it's really cool to know. That while that's in post-production and being edited and all that stuff, 455 Films is still shooting new things. Uh, there's a lot of branches to the company. And so it's not slowing down the produ the post-production of one or the other. I did want to point out. No, Ryan, you know, what I will say is certainly the shutdown uh, of Paramount, you know, during the pandemic and the strikes certainly uh, affected us. But we have done our best to keep moving on new mm -hmm. projects. And I think we've done a pretty good job, but uh, for sure it was a, a handicap to us for a while. Yeah. Yeah. 
just want to point out that in the live chat, Galenda says, this means more to me now. My cousin chose Voyager to be playing when she passed. Wow. So Galenda, we really, really, really hope that you love this documentary as much as we are loving making it. Uh, so to finish up on Michael Westmore, are you able to name all the, the TNG people or some some notable people that that said, I'm very busy. And you said, it's for Michael Westmore. And they said, no one, Come Ryan, right in. no one has said that, including Sylvester Stallone. I was just going to say, Sylvester yeah. Stallone didn't blank, blink an eye, said yes yeah. instantly. Everyone we have asked has said yes. That's incredible. Yep. And we hope yeah, to and have give, uh, Voyager some love. Robert Beltran, mm -hmm. uh, incredible interview with him for uh, Westmore. Uh, Armin, yeah, and, and, and we Jeff used Holmes. our time with Rob. We used our time with uh, Robert. Yes, to, uh, we did to uh, get a, a few more things in the into the Voyager doc that we uh, weren't able to get to with him when he said. So let's just say us. there were a few questions nagging at me that we did not. Uh, get answers to originally, and we had the opportunity, thanks to Michael Westmore, and love. The documentary. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, anything else that the team is working on that we can divulge right now? Uh, something we're going to be announcing in San Francisco uh, with Creation. Uh, I think we'll save it for, cre uh, for that event. But Lolita, do you want to talk about the event? In San Francisco? Yes. San Francisco creation event, March 8th, 9th, and 10th is going to be a wonderful, fun event. Creation hasn't been in San Francisco in about 10 years. So everyone is thrilled to be going back there. Um, we are going to have a sneak peek of the Voyager documentary for you there, along with Jerry Ryan and um, Ethan Phillips will be there. So we're really looking forward to that. Joe can talk a little bit about what he's put together for you for that. Um, the exciting thing for me on the note for San Francisco is after all these years, you guys have all seen the Rat Pack numerous times in Vegas and other places, and we finally have a Rat Pack CD, hey. official CD, hot off the press. First time it will be available is in San Francisco. Um, we do have a website for it. It is Star Trek Rat Pack .com. You can go there now. Pre-order, put your name on a list, and um, we're very proud of it. So San Francisco should be a lot of fun on many for many levels, especially for the Voyager doc. Which especially Joe, for that. To? Yes. Yeah. Well, well, because uh, Ethan and Jerry are going to be in San Francisco, uh, we're putting together uh, about a three-minute chunk of the film, the half of it centered around Jerry Ryan and seven and nine and the other half of centered around Ethan and uh, Neelix. So, so, uh, you know, I don't want to really tell you anything more because it's people telling you the story in the clip. So, uh, it seems, uh, it seems, uh, a little premature for me to, to spill the beans other than that's what it, what's it, what it's about or what it's going to be. It's fantastic. Ethan and, so uh, Ethan and Jerry. A little we'll more also information. be announcing a, a co-production with Creation. And I have to say, you know, I started with Creation. Lolita, you've got me beat. But 35 years now. 2010. And I have not missed the convention yet. Oh. Adam and Gary and Steph have been terrific to us. And uh, we're very excited about the next project, which is Star Trek related. But again, we'll announce that fully in San Francisco. Right. Yes. So a little more information about that convention. Everybody, uh, as Lolita said, March 8th, 9th, and 10th, but get there on the 7th because we're going to be partying mm -hmm. early. There are going to be yes. some functions that Thursday night. Be there Are we, for Ryan? Sure. What's, what's happening, Ryan? I don't even know about that. Well, as the official, one of the two official <laughs> hosts of Star Trek San Francisco, I can tell you we'll be partying. I'll oh, be there Thursday we'll night. We'll also have <laughs> uh, games <laughs> and prizes. Myself, Bonnie Gordon will be there. Uh, everybody that shows up early, we're planning a bunch of really cool surprises. It's going to be a ton Excellent. of fun. I'm super excited for it. Dave, I haven't missed an S uh, creation STLV since 2007. You got me beat then. Okay. Yeah. I've got but you I all beat. 
<laughs> you yeah. go back yeah. to uh, the Hilton. I, listen, I've been with Creation since before Vegas, wow. before Pasadena, before downtown LA, going back to New York. So there you go. God wow. bless so, you, Harry. I love them to death. I do yep. want everybody to know uh, creationent.com. That's creationent.com. Dozens of Star Trek celebrities, uh, lots of events, wall to wall panels. It's going to be so much fun. You got to check it out. We hope to see you there. And we've got a full STSF Trek to San Francisco preview during Virtual Trek Con on the fifth day. That is this coming Monday at 2.45 p.m. Pacific, 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to give you a full breakdown of everything that will ch basically change your mind. And you'll say, okay, that's it. I got to go. Sorry. I got to I gotta call in sick and well, just go. San Francisco holds a special place in my heart. And Lolita, you and Joe, too. That's where we film the, uh, the reel for what we left behind. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the, the Kickstarter, uh, yeah, the, the, kicks, the Indiegogo. No, 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 the Indiegogo. Sorry, yeah. sorry, uh, Indiegogo. The Indiegogo <laughs> uh, video uh, uh, in the that we shot in the, the hotel room with Ira and Adam, yeah, uh, Terry, Armin, Ar Renee. It was amazing. Yeah, Max. Aaron. Yeah. 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 Miss Thank Renee and Aaron. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and Casey and Jeff were there as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because the Rat Pack was there. That's how many years ago that was. So it was yeah, uh, it was December of 2016. 2016. Yeah, 16. December of 2016. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, so I, I think say, dude, I'm sorry, Ryan. No, I was please just go gonna ahead. say keep your eye on the creation website because I, I'm hoping um there's gonna be some more Star Trek down the road. Great. Yes. Ryan probably knows. That was quite a knowing smile there, Lolita. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're all, we're definitely all hoping for more because back in the day, creation used to have like three, four, Everywhere. five, six three Star shows Trek a weekend every uh, country. It was I, so Star Trek Connecticut. That's what I want for my family. <laughs> there you go. Push, yeah. push it. I will. All right. So everybody knows though, if uh, San Francisco is a big hit, that certainly hugely increases the chances that Trek tour creations trek tour will be coming to your city so make sure this first one is a huge hit now we will see you all there let's move on to the voyager documentary because i think everybody is basically filed in now and they're ready to hear about that so joe you've been working day and night editing the heck out of this thing can you tell us how are things going what's it looking like uh, it's it's looking good. Uh, Nick uh, Kofsky and I have been uh, we're, we're work, he's working remotely, uh, and I'm I'm at Paramount uh, almost every day, uh, working away. Um, the, fil the film is coming together. Uh, we have about two and a half mo more months before we're going to start putting a bunch of pieces together and figuring out the puzzle of of a long narrative. And uh, hopefully uh, by the mid midsummer we'll have a picture lock, and uh, once we have picture lock, we'll we'll get a rough mix and uh, some uh, some color correction done, and uh, uh, we will hopefully in the fall now. As uh, I know, we keep pushing back, but we're we're mid. This is what we're planning: is in the fall that we will. Uh, have our our uh, uh, backer uh, premieres. Uh, probably, probably October uh, would be safe to say in in this time right now because we don't want to get too close to Thanksgiving. But uh, um, that's 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 the goal. And then uh, while that is while we're doing that, we'll be that's when we'll be contacting CBS to get assets from them to help us finish the film, the final version of the film with the the highest resolution uh, uh, footage that we can get from them. And so the film probably won't come out until early 2025, but but the backers will definitely see a feature, a pretty close to finished feature in the fall. And I'll say we have an embarrassment of riches right now because our average section, Joe, you'll agree, is what, 30 minutes? I mean, if we were just to 
put together what we have now, we'd have a three hour film. So yeah. we've got a lot of work to cut that down, but we really have interviewed just about every single person peripherally, uh, peripherally uh, involved in Voyager, everyone. Hundreds uh, of people. Just right. the amount of people that we got th two years ago in June when we shot for a week. That was like, what, 60 people in one Easily. shot? Yeah. Easily, unbelievable. Not more. Yeah. And since yeah. then, so many more. Yeah. Wow. So um, there are some people that would say, uh, I've, I've actually seen one person say, you know, you don't need to shoot everybody. Just <laughs> get, you know, just get the thing out. Can you tell everybody, uh, Dave or Joe, possibly what the importance is of gathering different perspectives when telling a story, especially being that this is documentary film, um, documenting being the key word? I don't well, agree you know, with that, Ryan. I mean, you know, we saw in what we left behind, we had kind of a Rashomon going on, right? We had different perspectives from different people. And these people poured their seven years, most of them, right, Lolita, at least, of their lives into this show and are very proud of it. So our feeling is if they wanted to talk, we wanted to record them because this, mm -hmm. quite frankly, I mean, I don't see CBS going back to uh, exploring Voyager. This is their chance to tell their story. And we don't mm -hmm. want to uh, leave anyone out or leave anybody behind. So exactly. that, that's been our you know, and, attitude. And this is, you know, the, the subtitle to uh, our last film and, and, and the subtitle to this film is looking back at the respective shows. So, you know, one, all those, you know, the, the, the cast and crew, we're talking hundreds of people, right? Now, we didn't film, we didn't interview no. hundreds of, of people, but we, at least a hundred people we interviewed. And those people were all there, but they were wow. in different different uh, aspects of the production. So everybody has a different point of view. And, you know, even though the show is a shared legacy, you know, the people in post-production and visual effects, yeah, we had they the might editor. pop on set here. Yeah, we had Daryl Baskin, one of the editors. The UPN, Joe. Yeah, we have the, we have, uh, the, the president of UPN, Lucy Salhaney. Uh, we had Paramount execs uh, talking about their their side of things. We had obviously the producers and the writers and the actors. Uh, we had people like you know Mike and Denise Akuda and Doug Drexler, Terry uh, Metalis, Terry Metalis, uh, Ron Moore, who uh, some of you might know was uh, briefly a part of the Voyager writing Both team. Runners. Yep, we had both. Yeah, Ronald. actually, and we had Ronald D. Moore as yep. well. That's right. Uh, yeah. Part of the visual effects team partnered with Dan Curry. Uh, you know, so we, we had Rick Sternbach. You know, all these people have something to say. Um, it's really that's that's my responsibility is to try and find a way to get everybody's get everybody in. And, you know, what we always say is. Uh, amongst ourselves is thank God for special features because uh, it, it's almost impossible to get everybody in uh, that we want to get into the film. There's only so much real estate uh, in time. So, um, you know, there will be bonus features that uh, things that might not have made it in that we wanted to get in, but it just didn't work in the narrative we were trying to tell. But They'll, they'll, they'll still be something for people to see and think, have more perspectives. The other thing that's interesting is there was, you know, dozens of people like myself who worked on Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and ended their kind of career, for whatever reason, with Voyager. So it was interesting to get the different shows up leading up to that and what their experiences were like on Voyager versus Deep Space Nine and TNG. So it's just mm -hmm. so many different perspectives of people. Some people only worked on Voyager. Um, but, you know, like Joe said, it's just trying to find everybody's voice. Right. I just want to hit the pause button for a second because uh, Maya in the live chat says, I love my To The Journey shirt. Any way to get another? 
So uh, Maya in the live chat, I've just put the link where you can get another at the pre-order store. Yep. Everybody watching right now in the live chat, if you'd like to get a really cool to the journey shirt or maybe one like the one I'm wearing, um, get that at the link we've just added in the uh, live chat. It's uh, the backer kit pre-order store. All right. So it's obviously super important to get a million, as many different perspectives. Otherwise you're getting half the story. And mm -hmm. that's what I fell in love with when it came with regards to uh, what, what we left behind is it feels like sometimes, honestly, you get the most in-depth behind the scenes stuff from somebody that was a PA or an editor like or somebody that wrote two episodes and it, because they just have the most, it, it's, it's kind of tougher for somebody that's just on the set all the time, you know, on the stages with the lights and the cameras, they're memorizing lines, they're doing that. But then some people are in the corners observing or well, some look, people I'm, are I'm the ultimate buttons. Star Trek fan. I knew Ken Biller's name. I didn't know him. I'd never seen him. We interviewed him. It was terrific. A uh, Mike Demerit. Uh, second, second, Lolita. Did yes. he start? Yep. Mm -hmm. And worked his way up. I had no idea who he was. And then we even had the mayor of Paramount, uh, Aaron Siegel, who started out as a PA and was, well, I, I don't know if I should give it away. The mailroom but... first. Started in the yeah, mailroom. He, he, he wow. started in the mailroom for. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to Paramount. give away the ending. That's what I'm saying. No. Yeah. <laughs> Just stay yeah. tuned. <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned. Exactly. But we also, you know, we're telling a whole nother story here. I'm talking to you guys from Paramount. I've been here now. It's hard to believe with this company that I formed with Shatner way back when, since 2011. And no one has really told the story of Paramount and what it was like here. And Lolita can speak to it because she lived it. But this was all Star Trek. I mean, I'm talking to you from Star Trek Alley, what it's yeah. still called, because every stage was Star Trek. And we're also trying to tell that story and the story of UPN, uh, the beginning of a whole new network. So there's a lot that we're trying to pack in to this film that's not Dave been is actually before. Dave is actually sitting on top yeah. of the stages. Stages eight nineties. You bet. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and across where the uh, yeah. where the bridge of both Voyager and the Next Generation were. You can see the pictures given to me by the heads of the studio back at the time. Yep. Okay, but, so we um, have a cool yeah, there's a lot. In other words, Ryan, there's a lot. We're covering all of Voyager, but a, a lot more. A lot mm -hmm. more. Yeah. All right. So everybody in the live chat, feel free to ask your questions now. I'm really grilling these guys. I'm going to ask them the hard hitting questions. Oh, boy. I know. I Boy, I'm nervous myself. But Coffee Black in the live chat asked this question. Ah. This is a juicy one. Any hints as to what the extra shooting footage might contain, like for like bonus features and such? Wow. I mean, Joe, all right, I'll ask you, Joe, the typical question. How many hours of footage are we at by now? Uh, we're, we're, in, we're probably, uh, <laughs> well, if you, <laughs> if you count like all the cameras, it, it's it's like probably close to a thousand. But, uh, yeah, you wow. know, we've probably got about, got about, 150 to 200 hours of uh, material. Well, Ryan, there's Maybe, your answer. So yeah, yeah. we have to cut this down to about 110 minutes. So we have plenty for the special yeah. features. So what what would those special features look? You know, mm -hmm. um, we will hopefully have certain, you know, like the art departments and the visual effects. There will be a section, uh, you know, that's yet uncut, but that we're, we're planning to cut. I mean, to edit Creation uh, of, uh, UPN. for the film. And, you yeah. know, probably because we have so many things, and, and obviously this is a Voyager doc, so it's uh, most of the people, they love the behind the scenes, but the cast is very important. And the cast, we're, they're going to take up a good chunk of this film. And so we might not have as much for the visual effects or the, you know, the art department in the film that we want, but there might be more of that in a special feature um you know the same with the writers you know we might have to get a little bit more of th that in there we i i don't know right now because like i said we're, we're still cutting we're still editing things 
and or we're going to start can, piecing, you, piecing you the can. film together. I mean, there's no way yeah. we can get in all those great interviews, but we got their whole executive team, the yeah. whole creation of the network. It's never going to well, fit we, into the yeah. film, but it'll fit. Uh, yeah, a, it, a portion, a portion of it yeah. will fit into the film, and a, and maybe an extended, expanded mm -hmm. version of it that we originally edited will end up in a special feature. How about so AC those, those Lyles? Uh, you know, there's so many things that we could go to. Yeah, you know, so there's there, and plus the, we also have, did a, um, you know, Garrett and I went to Bordeaux, France, oh. uh, in 2022. Uh, for uh, we were invited by the uh, European Space Agency for something, and, and that's still a, uh, yep. and and that's something that will be in the film. But there was a lot more. Uh, and Ryan, that uh, Joe, let's tease that, that there's another thing, the Joe, with uh, Tim Russ and the European Space Agency. That's that right. People will be very impressed with. I would say oh. it's a first for a Star Trek documentary. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. While we're on the subject of, of putting things together, too, um, the other convention that 455 will be sneak peeking at is in Philadelphia, the DNI Con in April. And so excited because Kate Mulgrew will be there. And I yeah. think Joe, once again, we'll put together yeah. some lovely piece for Kate. And Tim Russ will be at that convention, Garrett, um, quite a few of the other Voyager cast members. So that's another place where you guys will be able to see some sneak peek. That Joe will put together. Yeah. For us. And yeah. speaking of yeah, Michael and, Westmore, and, 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 uh, you can run the Rocky Steps while you're there in yeah. Philly. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and to get back to the all these sneak peeks, these are things that we've been working, we've we've honed and crafted already that are going to be in the film, and you're going to be seeing excerpts of things that are going uh, that are going to be in this finished film. So, uh, yeah. yeah. I have to say, you know, that, that, every time Joe sends us something to look at, I get yeah. very excited. It's, it's you guys are going to be really, really happy. I know it's taken a while and you're so patient, but, uh, you know, Joe is only one person. Well, he has help now, but it just takes yeah. a long time. I have a whole yeah, new yeah. respect for editors. I have no idea what how involved time You know, one, one thing that, that kind of set us back and all is that, you know, when we did what we left behind, we had three of us that essentially were editing the film: Luke, Snail, and myself, and uh, and uh, Kai, Kai uh, Demelo Folsom, who put together the um, the season eight animation piece. Um, when we started this this film, you know, Luke and I, we also worked together at another company, and uh, he was he was going to be editing with me now he's still working with us and he's he's actually got we were you know remastering some of the visual effects uh for the you know things that you that uh you from the shows that you know and love that we'll never seen in the resolution that uh and remastering the way that we were doing them uh but luke you know he also had a had, you know had a child born during the pandemic plus we were all dealing with the pandemic and due to to you know just life he had to step back from the editing so for the last couple of years it's really been me and you know i'm was splitting my time between the half and half between making a living and and working on on this doc um you know we talked about this uh when we were in vegas in august uh uh uh, an old friend of mine, an editor that I've known for 25 years, Nick Kofsky, um, good friend. I brought him on board, but he was not a Star Trek guy. So I had to school him. It took us a yeah, few months wow. to, you know, and now he, 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 he's actually, he's all in. You know, yeah. he, he, and he never thought he, he was like, ah, Star Trek. But I said, I need a storyteller and he's a great storyteller. And I said, that don't worry. Bad. <laughs> yeah, now he is a, now he is a fan, and he he knows he, he you know he he's he's learning as he goes. But fortunately, he's got Dave and myself uh, to to help fill in blanks. Uh, you know anything that he needs to know or he's not sure about. You know he he asks us. But uh, it took us a, it took a little while for him to really get up to speed. But now he's cooking. He's cranking away. So we're 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 moving up the warp speed right now. So uh, 
Um, I mean, I'll just I'm say really... from a, a producing standpoint, I never thought Paramount Studios would be closed for months. I never thought we'd have to deal with all the COVID restrictions. Uh, we've had people on our crew or cast that have had COVID multiple times, have had to quarantine. Uh, we've had to again, reschedule shoots reschedule. And, and yeah. things. I mean, I'm not crying here. This is what everybody in entertainment is dealing with. The whole and world. And it's what, what everybody in the world is going yeah. right. with. But, mm -hmm. it's, but it's, it's, it's been tough because every time tough. you get a little bit of momentum, Something happens and you have to take a step back or a pause. I mean, I'll say we were going to shoot something. I flew back. I was back in New Jersey, Connecticut. And on the flight, they announced the SAG strike. We had to cancel the shoot. Uh, yeah. For right. Voyager. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it just it's been a rough couple of years, but we're through it. That's the key. Now, speaking of through it, uh, I've got some bad news here. There are way oh. too many amazing questions in this live chat and i as a fan want to know the answer to all of How them are because we they're really all that? They fire, are fire really good. Off, Ryan. here we go we're going to try to rapid fire some of these because they're really good questions i shouldn't act so, so surprised but they're really good okay so here's one from jamie somerville any updates about the remastered footage from the show Joe. Uh, that would oh. be Joe who just disappeared. <laughs> we just... <laughs> well, well, I can put what he's doing. He's using AI to up-res all of the behind-the-scenes footage, and we even have archival footage from Entertainment Tonight from back in the day, which you would not recognize. It is incredible what Joe is doing. But go ahead, Joe. Yeah, we... we... We wanted we, when we did what we left behind. We had all the behind the scenes footage from the sh uh, from the Blu rays or and the DVDs, I should say, and you know the featurettes. And there were things that we wanted to get in there because you know Michael Pillar, for instance, who's who's no longer with us. We've always tried to get his voice. We really tried to get his voice into um, actually going back with Dave. Uh, for uh, Chaos, Chaos on the Bridge, yeah. and and we struggled with it to try to get him. We got a little bit of him in for what we left behind, but now I have the the special features, and I'm and one of the things is CBS. The special features they don't have the split track, so we couldn't really use them because they have music tied to them, and music rights are really expensive. And it opens up a whole can of worms, Impossibly and we don't even know who the older yeah. the, the owners are. But because of the uh, AI copy capabilities, I can separate the music and just get the dialogue from those featurettes. And now we can use those and incorporate them into the storytelling and give voices to people that are no longer with us and have them Joe be included the because they're they're like Michael Pillar, for instance. His legacy, he's one of the three co-creators of that of Voyager. So to not have him in the film is always or, or as much as we would like to has always irked us. And now we can do it. Mm -hmm. So right. Mm -hmm. That's that's great. So uh you mentioned an hour and fifty minutes documentary. A lot of people, including Thomas Bishop, said, Why not a solid two hours? Why an hour and fifty minutes? That's just the, there's really no rule. Um, what was uh, Spock, Joe? They, they, uh, with our, our last, our, both our last two films were, were usually about between 110 and 100, 120. Well, 110 hours, uh, 110 minutes. Yeah. Um, you know, 90 minutes is a feature length. We invariably go over. We want it to be entertaining. I know people, some people just love, would, don't want it to end. You know, we've joked among ourselves that, oh, we could probably do a mini series on all this, you know. Uh, well, but, I did do a know, mini for, series on the captains, don't forget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so did I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that's right, Joe. You but, were there. I forgot. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, um, you know, I think for a narrative film, for a narrative documentary, 90, 90 to 110 minutes is a good. You know, good, good length. Anything good in over two hours. Now we're we're slowly creeping into Christopher Nolan territory, right. and uh, you know it just 
it seems a lot. That's that's why we have special features. If you really yep. want it, you know, to, to delve into other things, you know, we'll, we're we're going to be putting things in there that we just felt wouldn't get into the the film. You know, uh, we we kind of uh, work off of a, a three act structure in narrative work. Um, you know, obviously in on, on the episodes, it was more of a five act structure but a three-act structure is kind of what we like to to work off in these documentaries and well, we're, uh, we're open to the miniseries idea i mean that was epics that came to us and said they love the captains see the background yeah. so much that they wanted five more episodes and we're if the demand is there we are open yeah, well, absolutely. the demand is in the live chat. As soon as you said miniseries, yeah. a bunch of people start saying, do a miniseries. I want that like Faith Howell uh, out on the East Coast, who was also asking about conventions on the East Coast. And she can't wait to see you guys. She's great. Uh, but that also leads into what you guys were talking about, it leads into Joshua M. Patton's question. He's of CBR.com. He says, speaking of editing and cuts, can you all talk a bit about balancing the complete record of the history and making the piece flow in the way casual Trek fans will find watchable. Joe. Wow. I mean, that's, that's, that's I mean, the big well, question. we, we, that, that is the goal is to find the flow of the film and, and make the transitions from one talking about one thing to another flow in a natural organic way. That's that, uh, that, you don't even notice it it's it's if 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 nick and i have done our job right and the, and the whole team who's going to watch and criticize and we'll have notes amongst ourselves if we do our job right the time will fly by and you'll be left wanting more mm -hmm. if we don't do it right if if it's feels like it's oh we're only an hour in and i'm I, I, it's just so boring then then we're failing so um that's that's part of the job of editing uh you know editing is especially for a documentary but even in narrative forms editing is the last uh the last stage of writing you know in a narrative right. script yeah. film script somebody writes a script and then they film it and changes are made on set and then they get into the editing room and they change it some more with the footage, they can't go back and rewrite it, but they can take things and change the context of them and, and tell, a, tell a story. So, you know, we, we went in with a bunch of questions that we asked people. And as we went through it, you know, the, that, those, those first two weeks where we interviewed, about, I think it was about 40 people that we interviewed uh, in Burbank at Soapbox. And we had a set of questions. Now, as we got farther into it, people, from those interviews, people talked about things that we didn't have in our questions. And went, well, wow, that's interesting. Oh, I want to know more about that. So we started incorporating those questions in the later interviews that we did. And so what, why, why something might make it into a film or it, it doesn't, if it's, we're talking about a contentious uh, subject, if there's only one voice talking about this thing, that's one person's perspective and that's not necessarily conducive to, to getting a, a whole or whole picture. If more people are talking about it and they all have different things then you can kind of go, well, this person said that and this person said that this person sort of corroborated that, but said something contrary there, you might not be getting, uh, it, it might still be a little blurry, but you have a, better understanding that somewhere the truth is somewhere in between all those right. things and we also had another issue here which lolita you can speak to uh, unlike what we left behind the cast is not all in los angeles exactly so we yeah. had to get uh robbie mcneil in the south we had one week one hour window with roxanne dawson when she was actually in the country because she's so busy we had to get kate mulgrew in london 30 minutes 30 yep. minutes only so, uh, uh, johnny to... phillips uh ethan phillips on on the ocean <laughs> you know he was our he was our last interview yeah. for the film yes. and it took us three years to get to get it yeah because yep. he was quarantined he could he was and working he was in on, england uh, he was in england he was, 
Well, he was working on a show and they, he had to be quarantined because of the production. They didn't want him mixing with people because if he got sick, it would bring the production down. And same with you know? uh, Robbie McNeil. He was on his way to Canada to produce and direct and we had to grab him before he left the country and had to quarantine. Yeah, he was actually moving. Yeah. He was moving. He had, and we had to catch him. Yep, where he was. In, yeah, it was crazy. Ryan, so, can I ask you how much time we have left? Because I don't want a couple. We things have to miss. seventeen minutes, and oh, wow. uh, let oh. me hop on this one. Here's a quickie. One Trek fan who, by the way, took five days off from work so she could enjoy all five days of wow. virtual Trek Con. Uh, she says, "Do you need a test viewer?" I volunteer. No need to answer that one, but and then but then people in the live chat started saying plus one, so it's gonna yeah. get out of hand quick. Yeah. Ryan, uh, we can't see those chats. We can't see their questions. Only you. No. Oh. No. Okay. There, I see them all. They're great. Well, I actually, know. if you pull it up on YouTube, you can. On you just oh, have to mute it. That's okay. No, you no. Just have to. Just curious. Uh, but they'll they will stay up, so you can look at them as well okay. later. But here's a whole bunch. Uh, Jennifer Ramsey asks, will you guys be in San Antonio at SpaceCon in October? And Dan89H says, you should so show some love to UK, any uh, events, shows, or anything. We will so, be in the UK. What I wanted uh, to talk here. about, I wanted to mention uh, when we get, I want to wrap up when we get there about the conventions that we'll be at. I'm hoping, nothing is set yet, but I'm really hoping that we might be able to have a presence there and another sneak preview um, in Blackpool at the official destinations convention in July, um, which I haven't really spoken to Dave too much about, but I'm sure he'll be up for it. This is like, um, <laughs> <laughs> so Do I have to look for all my pounds now and make yeah. sure I have the money? <laughs> nothing official, but we love okay. We love working with Destination. You know me, Lolita. I'm in. I'm in. And they have a lot of great uh, Star Trek guests, of course, there. And so we love them. Yeah. And it's uh, July 27th, 28th. So right before mm -hmm. Vegas, which of I'm course have a presence there as, as usual. So my only okay. problem now is my daughter's going to want to come. That's the only problem. Well, my little uh, Star Trek. Young. Yes. Uh, yeah. So here's a good question from Jemison, who says, I truly enjoyed what we left behind and have much respect. However, it feels as though the Voyager documentary has been transferred to focus on all of Trek. Can you comment on this? Uh, well, I'll speak to that first before Joe. I would say no. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a total Voyager uh, focus. I think the difference is that Voyager was the flagship show of UPN. So we are dealing with the launch of a network and what the studio put behind that as we dealt with and what we left behind was syndication. So uh, now I I don't, Joe, do you feel that we've covered all of track? I don't think so. I think it's- No, I, I mean, I, I think, uh, I, you know, there are people that worked on Trek that worked on all the shows. Like Vaughn so they, Armstrong and Jeff Combs. Yeah. Well, or, 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 or the kudas and and the and the visual York. effects teams they you know lolita yeah lolita yeah. worked on all the shows now those people worked on shows and we want to give them their due but uh you know they weren't exclusive to voyager but they worked on voyager you know and and that's rick what we Berman. talked about I mean, with we them rick brandon yeah. Brown. and brandon yeah. Yeah. Taylor, you know yeah yeah so but no the we, focus is the same the focus is the same so now this yeah, is I along mean, those lines. Uh, Karsten K asks, how about a UPN documentary? Well, there's going to be a mini UPN documentary in here. I mean, I don't, Joe, what do we have? Five execs? Four or five? We have, uh, uh, I don't think anybody's covered we have, UPN. Like we this. have four, four of that. Four. Yeah. Plus all um, the employees I, and yeah. the benefit of shooting on the lot. So this is the closest I think you're going to see to a UPN doc. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, a lot of those, it was hard to get Lucy Selhaney. She didn't want to be on I camera. I had to go to you know, Cape Cod of, to get her. Yeah. The, the, a, oh, lot, a, lot of the, a lot of the people that. Oh, yeah, Ryan, that was on, on, <laughs> a, a lot of the people on the, on the studio side, the execs, they yeah. don't really want to talk about, about that stuff too much. All right. You I'll know? give you a funny behind the scenes story, Ryan. So we were shooting with Rick Berman and Brandon Braga 
in Rick Berman's backyard. We're about to do our UPN interviews the next week. Somebody's playing music in Rick Berman's around Rick Berman's house. So he says, Dave, go find out who's playing music. And, 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 and it was a problem because we can't have we music can't clear while we're doing it. interviews. We can't clear it. So. so I run around going to one of the neighbors. It's Tom Mazza, who was the exec we were about to interview, is Rick Berman. And he's I'm like, we're doing a Voyager doc. He's like, oh, I'm Tom. You're I'm gonna you're gonna interview me this week. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Only in yeah. LA. Yeah. yeah. Small world. Yeah. Well, here's it wasn't another his one. music either. <laughs> no, Tom here's was another innocent. one. He was innocent. Yeah. Tori, that we all know and love, says, "Will we? Will we see never seen or aired Voyager footage?" Hmm. Ooh. Well, we were seen, hoping you know? there. There was one of the cast members thought that they had a box of we're trying DV tapes oh. uh, of. Um, but that has yet to be found. So, uh, you know, well, we will ask CBS, but um, the question is, yeah, is there any? I mean, they were notorious for not really saving the behind the scenes. I mean, there's an infamous Voyager reel uh, and a series reel that we'd love to get our hands on, but no one has it. We have asked yeah. right, Lolita, yeah. everybody. Yeah, because it was shown at the rap party. We yeah. have stuff that was shown at these rap parties, and no one seems to know where any of that went. We have asked everyone. And yeah. uh, anyone out there knows, please, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people say things like, oh, there's some great, I'm sure so and so has it. And then you try to not what we, That's not what we uh, found. No. no. Yeah. Here's another good one. This is from Marsha Classic Schreier. She loves the original series. She Yay. says, I loved the eighth season writer's room in What We Left Behind. Is there anything like that in the Voyager documentary? We 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 had we had an idea. We had an idea. Had a great idea, yeah. Had a great idea to do something in the vein, but totally different. And we asked several Voyager writers if they would be interested in working with us on on something. And everybody was, you know, uh, you know, I people were doing it. their own shows, and and basically everybody kind of passed on it. Um, it's and it's a, it's a shame because we because we wanted to do something evocative, uh, something new, something. Totally different from what Ira and and uh, that writing team did for what we left behind, um, but you know we wanted the uh, imprimatur of of a, a, a Voyager writer to 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 develop it and take it out of our feeble either. brains and make it <laughs> something that's worthy. And um, unfortunately, we were not able to get that. So. And we, we, you know, we, we, we really... had the, the luxury of a showrunner on what we left behind. We don't have that here. But I would argue that what Joe did and some of the things we did with Tim Russ, we have done some very unique things that you've never seen in a Star Trek. Yeah, there will be some things Absolutely. just not exactly Absolutely. like that. And you don't you want call to putting know. Garrett, Garrett essentially turning him into an astronaut. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. There's there's a lot of fun stuff. Nobody's going to be disappointed. No, no. Uh, and here's this is a good the one. first time I've ever had a Star Trek actor speak to someone in space, which is pretty cool. That is huge. So here's a good one. Oh, the profanity! Who is Charlene Schmidt, one of the OGs of podcasting? She used to do a podcast on Voyager. Asks a question that I'm probably going to ask you uh, in other panels and conventions uh she says what has been the biggest surprise of making this documentary i'm gonna answer that first um because lolita you've heard me say this i was shocked at how emotional everybody <laughs> became insane. and i think it's a big part because lolita did the interviews off camera it's not all the time but i think because they knew lolita they really opened up to like they did with Ira, 
to a really great extent. And I did not ex expect our average interview with the actors to go two hours. And then so many people broke down and cried over their involvement. That blew me away. But I attribute yeah. a lot of that to Lolita. Oh, thank you. And I was going to say the same thing. I mean, it was such a reunion to see these people because remember we were there seven years together, but it was 20 some odd years ago. And some people hadn't seen each other. They're not on the convention circuit, you know, like some of us are, but the emotion was just wonderful. And the, the tears were good tears and sad mm -hmm. tears, but just, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. And uh, I think it's going to come through in the documentary. And let's give a shout out to our visual consultants, Jonathan West and Chris Crosscove who Absolutely. shot seven seasons of original Star Trek. So mm -hmm. they walk in, they see uh, Jonathan, Chris, Lolita. It's like a, a reunion. Karen yeah. Westerfield, we had to do our makeup. Karen, we had, yeah. yeah. Doing makeup. We're talking about yeah. 90s Trek, by the way, when we say uh, original yeah. Star Trek. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, just that awesome. yeah. they're like, wow. What they legacy, legacy Star legacy Trek. Legacy yeah. Show. yeah. Hey, um, Ryan, to me, it's the only Star Trek. Yeah. Oh, I know it. Well, on that note... Uh, Zanzas asked the question, any interest in doing an enterprise and discovery ah. documentary? Enterprise. Enterprise. No, I want to see them all. <laughs> I'd love to finish it off. It's up to the fans if the desire is there. I know a lot of the actors are there would love to do it. Mm -hmm. enterprise you know, I've been pushing for it. it. I bet yeah. Lolita is. I would I'm love to. Hey, so am I, Ryan. I'd love to finish it out. Joe's like, can we, can I finish editing this yeah, one? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Joe looks tired already. Yeah, yeah. you got, you, you guys should just keep him it on. He's been up for me. Like my shoulder like, hey. yeah, We've got Westmore and then this one and yeah. Enterprise would be awesome. Well, let yeah, me ask the live chat, live chat, what do you think? Do you want to see an Enterprise documentary or are you like, eh, and Discovery too? Uh, what do you say? Or are you like, ah. Oh, I'm done. I'm full off of Discovery. Star Trek. I, think I don't need more. Zoom. Discovery is still in, pre or they're wrapping now. Yeah. I yeah. think you need a little distance. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the Enterprise problem. With the Discovery. Enterprise goes with the legacy shows. That has yeah, to Enterprise is 20 first. years old now. So, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Okay. Well, uh, let's see. Do we have another good one well, here? This is okay. painful, Ryan. Yeah. J.R. Poole out in Pittsburgh asks a question. I'm not even sure if it's serious. He's kind of a rascal, this J.R. Poole. Oh. He asks, is the Snyder Cut going to be a thing? I think that's a Joe <laughs> question. Yeah. Yeah. I I I I know J.R. I, I we uh, had words in Vegas. <laughs> um good words, but uh, um you know <laughs> that, that the the first assembly of a film is 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 the cut is the, the, the uh, you know we'll see I mean that like I said uh, we're going to come out with what we think as a group is a, is is the film right and we're and things that we love that didn't make it into the film will go on to the bonus at, uh, you know the special features and, and again if the distributor wants more episodes I'm all for it. You know, we 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 joked about uh, what we left behind. Hang on, I'm just trying to get my my light uh, back on track here. Well, while um, you're doing when we that, were making what yeah. when we were making what we left behind, um, uh, we would joke about. You know, we had two directors, Dave and Ira, and uh, you know, Ira would say, "Yeah, yeah, that's that'll be for the director's cut." And I go, "And yeah, and that other thing that'll go in the other director's cut." Look at all those people. Enterprise. Enterprise. Yes. Wow. I, I have to give a shout out to Dominic and Connor who have an excellent, or I don't know if they're still doing it, but what a podcast uh, they've done, uh, Shuttle Pod 1. And uh, Dominic's and Connor's skill as interviewers is impressive and has really given me uh, interest in doing something about Enterprise. Plus, it's a great show. Oh, it's an excellent and, show. And, and you got to you know, remember, I, you guys know, I was in New York in 2001. That show premiered a week after 9-11, I believe. I mean, talk about a tough, tough uh, going they had in the beginning. It was it was difficult. And they had a short run of four years, yep. but it's just as popular as the others. So. Yep. But low mm, uh, premiering at that time was not easy. 
It was they still got a hundred hundred episodes in. Got yeah. their certification. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're just about out of time here, everybody. Oh, uh, I think it was I just one run track. Some dates before yeah, we please. go. Um, mm -hmm. Just want to make sure that you guys come and visit us, please, in San Francisco, creation yeah, March 8th, 9th, and 10th, uh, dnicon.org in Philadelphia, April 20th weekend. Maybe course, Blackpool, maybe Blackpool. Uh, and Angel Vegas, of course. I'm, I'm getting there. Yep. January, uh, uh, July 27th, 28th, of course, we'll be in Vegas with some, some form of fun for you all. And if any of you are going to be on the cruise, I will be on the cruise. Please come say hello. Please come ask me more questions about the Voyager documentary. Um, I'll be happy to spend some time with you, especially well, if you... Rita, if I can talk, talk we will, in the uh, ship store, we will be selling our exclusive backer edition of what we left behind. That's so right. So if you wow, do not have is. that film yet, it will be there. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yep. So, so uh, real quick, one Trek fan says, question, when is the crowd fund for the Enterprise documentary? <laughs> uh, War Dog well, Ryan, Heim, you I'll... answer that. <laughs> yeah, that's you, Ryan. <laughs> well, yeah. we'll talk uh, soon. We're, we're in discussion. Very soon. So uh, War Dog Heim out in Montana says, just shut up and take my money. There was more to that. Sorry. <laughs> well, <laughs> you right, know, but... I'd like to say something just I, to thank the fans. Because, you know, we came up with this idea for crowdfunding back with Spock. And shockingly enough, Leonard Nimoy died. No one would fund the film. And I convinced the Nimoys to go to Kickstarter. And then same thing with what we left behind. People said I was crazy. We were crazy. They supported us. Voyager, maybe people told me I was absolutely nuts to try to crowdfund during the pandemic. And look mm -hmm. what happened. So um, I just want to thank everybody for the support. It's not a lot lost Absolutely. at all. Definitely. We could not do what we do without the fan support. We wouldn't be here right now. No. Without yeah. and, there are no and, networks and, uh, or streamers looking to support us. No, I wouldn't have a shirt. And, 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 and right. believe me, we, we all, we all know it's taken longer than we want to take and we feel it and we understand uh that some of you are impatient. We ask you, please just be patient. We want to put out the best film we can. Yes. Um, we're, we're, okay. we're getting there. It's we're, we've made a lot of strides over the last six months. And uh, I mean, I will say, you know, documentaries take a long time and what we left behind, we started in two, 2013 <laughs> and didn't finish until 2019. Now that's not mm -hmm. the case here, but they take a while. They do. Right. Well, speaking of time, uh, right. We're out of time. We got to run everybody in uh, just in the description box below, right below this video. You'll see uh, something that says, watch the next VTC five video. It's Chase Masterson and Max Grodenchik, two amazing people. Uh, that's Rom and Lita. Great panel. Check that out. Click that link. It'll take you right there on our way out. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comment section below and then return, we'll have those answered. Um, thanks so much. Dave, Lolita, and Joe, this has been so cool. It always is. Just keep pumping out those documentaries. We are thank gonna consume you, them all. And thank thanks you. for your thank help. You guys. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thanks Absolutely. to all of you. See you soon somewhere. <laughs> all right, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Virtual Trek on 5. Yeah. Bye-bye.